This video lesson focuses on the formatting of individual charts that will then fit together into your overall analysis. Now you might have seen some good examples of some visual analyses such as these flight delays in the United States, these heart disease patients in Canada, these New York City demographics, and this analysis on San Francisco airport visitors. Now, putting these all together are part of the analysis building block concept. However, before we can put it all together, we need to learn the mechanics of the individual visualizations, which is the focus of this video lesson. To start with, I'm gonna use this vehicle data that we used in the video on creating visualizations. And I'm gonna start with a scatter plot. So I'm gonna to go to my visualization properties, and here, you, there's lots of different options. I'm not gonna go over every one of them, but I'm gonna go over the key ones that are common across multiple visualization types. So in formatting, you can actually change the formatting of your axes. So for instance, with city fuel efficiency, if I wanted this to be a number type that had decimals, I could put that decimal number in here, and there I'm getting more precision. I could change this to currency if it was a currency type. Um, there's all kinds of things I can do with the formatting of these axes. Next is the fonts. You can change the fonts for individual charts so that they can stand out a little bit differently from the other charts if you want. And this can be used for things like labels as well as the axis styling. Now on the X and Y axis, there are options for doing things like turning on the zoom slider and turning on grid lines. And you'll see that this zoom slider got turned on when I checked that as, as well as these grid lines. And you can turn both of these on by just right clicking and going into show grid lines and show zoom slider. And you can do this on both the X and the Y axes. Now the zoom slider is pretty self-explanatory. You can use this to, to zoom in on a range of data. And when you have them active, you can actually use your scroll wheel. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse right now to zoom in and out on this just like it was a map. So there's also colors. Now there's a lot to talk about in colors, um, but we're gonna go over some of the key points of managing color and how to use color. So in the categorical type, I can either choose to have fixed colors, just all of them as one, or I can have categorical and I can change these individually. Now, let's say I change this uh, natural aspirated uh, categorical value, and I can do this again right on my, my, uh, my legend. Let's say I change this to something like green. If I wanted this to match this, I could go into the visualization properties here, and I can go into colors, and I can say, move the colors from another visualization, and I'm gonna take it from this page and this visualization. And I want the colors to match values, and now these both have the same colors. I could also take this and I could apply it to visualizations, and this will find all the other visualizations in my analysis file that have the same categorical type that I can apply these colors to across all of them. So I can do that all at once right there. And if I like, I can also save these as a document color scheme. So we can just do this. I'll say test right now. And now this is available to me in the document color screen schemes as a shortcut. I can also save it as a file or in a library item, and that way I can access it separately um, as a file and import it into any, any DXP file, or I can save it to the library and make it available to my colleagues if I'd like. If I want to make any of this my default, I can go into tools, and options and I can go down to um, visualization and I can change my categorical and my continuous color themes and this will apply as a default for all of my new analyses and all my new visualizations. Now with color there's uh, some options to talk about with the categorical or the continuous type so I'm going to change this to the city fuel efficiency which is my y-axis and you'll see here I have a gradient option. So this is going from the minimum to the maximum. I can do things like add different points. Let's say I wanna add a point for the median here and I wanna make this a yellow value. I can do that uh, very easily as well and that's now capturing the median. But the continuous has a lot of other features here such as segments where you can make entire segments of this above certain values, all a fixed color and below certain values, another fixed color. You can also change things like adding custom expressions and percentiles, all kinds of options here. And we'll talk about expressions in another video. Now there's some predefined things in Spotfire. So there's some predefined theme, uh, a theme here is a exclude outliers color theme. And if I click this, it's gonna color this from uh, the lower inner fence to upper inner fence of the distribution. And anything that's an outlier that's above that uh, upper inner fence is colored white there. So that's an easy way for me to find outliers visually. So there's a lot of options there for uh, things like color themes. Um, 
things like sizing allow you to change marker sizing. This can be done on maps and scatter plots. And uh, you also have uh, your label options here where you can configure this to be whatever label you'd like. Now on the, I'm gonna jump ahead now to the legend. So the legend's very interactive, but it can become cluttered. So you can turn on and off the legend items directly right here. And if like, let's say you want this color by, and I'm just gonna leave just a color by on there, but I wanna make that a little simpler. I can actually turn off the title for color by, and then I can turn off the axis selector as well. And uh, that's a more simple way to look at the legend. And to turn on and off the legend, you just use these, this little hamburger icon here to turn it on and off. And you can do that here as well, where you can change it to the left or the right of your visualization. Now, next is talking about the tooltip. So when you hover over a point or any data in a visualization, it's gonna show you a tooltip with some more details. And there are some tooltips that are used by default based on your, your configurations and what chart you're using. But you can move all of the, you can turn all these off, you can move them up or down, or add custom tooltips if you like. So if I wanna say car line, I can say car line here, and um, you know, I can say car line, I can say whatever I want in that name and hit okay. And now when I hover over this, it's gonna tell me that car line. Okay, now let's move on to another chart. I have the average fuel efficiency for all vehicles that were released over time. And if I'd like, I can just drag and drop, if I want this color theme here for these, these columns, I can just drag and drop it onto that column selector. And generally your column selectors are drag and droppable across all the other column selectors. Now, let's say I want these not to be a fixed color and I wanna show actually a gradient color theme up and down these for different values, for different city fuel efficiency values. What I need to do is actually make this a scatter plot. So let me remove this color and I'm gonna right click and just switch this visualization to a scatter plot. Okay, so now I need to do a line style, a line by. So I'll go into my line connection and I will add the column names, which is whatever is in this value axis here. So I have the column names, I'll make this the same as a marker, it's all now the same blue, but I wanted to, now I can just make the colors of the markers change, so I can go into colors here, and let's just make this the uh, city fuel efficiency, my Y axis, and let's just add some points here, okay? And now you can see that the color of this is changing in this gradient fashion de depending on the color of these values. And you know, I could change these if I'd like to have them however I need to just edit any of these. Um, and I can also create a rule. So I can say, for instance, anything above, um, greater than, let's say 20, I'll do a value here, and I'll say 20, color that red. And when I hit okay, you'll see that all the points that are above 20 have been colored red, this one's below 20 and it's not. Okay, now here I have this distribution of city fuel efficiency and these are numerical values on my x-axis. I can change this and I can auto bin this and make it more of a histogram and then I get a slider control here where I can change the, the histogram binning distribution. If I'd like, I can do a similar type of hierarchies with other charts. So here, let me do the uh, manufacturer and let me add um, the division and let me make this horizontal so we can see this a little bit better. So here's the manufacturer and the division. If I right click on this, I can make this a hierarchy and now this it will slide between manufacturers and between the uh, manufacturers with the division. Okay, now I brought this bar chart back to the way I had it and let's do a couple more features. We have these show hide controls and this allows me to turn on and off these different uh, features of the visualization such as the labels. I can turn those on and off. I can turn on and off these selectors as well by hitting the category or the value axis selector. If I'd like, I can change the name of the title by just double clicking it and I can just say air aspiration method and that will give me a fixed title or I can go into my settings and in the general tab, you can create a parameterized title by using that uses things like document properties or visualization features such as saying, let's say the Y axis display name by the X axis display name. I can put that in and hit okay. And now you'll see it's taking the Y axis, which is row count and then the uh, X axis air uh, aspiration. And if I want, I can change this. I can change just the name here to something like uh, car count. And now it says car count up there as well as in the axes. 
And if I change this to another value, you'll see that also change there as well as in the top. Now there are also some other column formatting properties. I can go into my data panel. If I select a numerical type and I go to the gear icon, then you'll see a distribution of the data and I can change the type if it's a integer or real, um, whatever uh, the data type is. And I can also do the formatting here. And this will apply to all of the visualizations that use this, this column. Now with things like air aspiration, which are categorical, you'll see it's been identified as a category. And here I can do something like changing the sort order. So right here, I have these in this order. If I wanted to move those into a different way, I can make this a custom sort order and I can move these things around. So I'll put turbocharged at the top and I'll hit okay. And now you'll see turbocharged is over here. And the last thing to talk about is the visualization canvas styling. Now this is gonna be covered more in the analysis concepts, but just to point out, there are some chart features here, such as visualization titles. You can change the style of the, the visualization to give it like a background if you like, um, different, um, different attributes. Um, you can also change things like the scales and turn on and off the lines that are on the scales if you'd like. So there are a couple options there for you on the scales and the titles, as well as the column selectors and those fonts and sizing.